everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley Lanise and I share tips that are motivating and spiritual, blending those two energies together so you can get the best benefit out of it. This week's video is part two on how to heal yourself through self-soothing. I'm gonna give you guys seven more tips. My goal for this video is for you guys to have easily implementable tips to use to self-soothe to help you along your self-healing journey. This video is so important to me and posting it today is also so important to me because as many of you know, tomorrow, September 27th, is the five year anniversary of my car accident. I always link my car accident story below, but just to give you a brief summary, if you're new here, in 2017, I got into a car accident on my way to my drawing class. I was coming up to a stop sign. There was another car coming up a hilly road. And what happened was I turned, I didn't see the car. I didn't have any sunglasses on either. And we collided. And at that time in my life, I was also very mentally unstable. I had no idea how to soothe myself nor did I have any interest in learning. I was very stubborn. And so that whole experience where I had to go to the hospital for eight days, have surgery, broke my pelvic bone in three places, ruptured my spleen, had to relearn how to walk. I had to use a walker for three months. I had all these rules. And so through that time healing, I realized that a part of the reason why I was so irritable and so, at a state of mind where I was able to put myself in that kind of a scenario and get into a car accident was because I wasn't focusing on self-love, self-healing, self-help. So this video has a lot of in the moment techniques you can use to self-soothe yourself. If you haven't seen last week's video, self-soothing is a technique that is under the umbrella term of self-help and it is something you can do in the moment to alleviate yourself of that painful energy. That leads me to tip number one, which is learn how to regenerate self-love inside of your own heart. The way that you do that, of course, is you study self-love, which I have videos on as well. And if you've seen those videos, or after you watch this whole video and you go and you watch that self-love video, tomorrow is actually my self-love anniversary. So I'm super excited about that because I turned my car accident into the day of my self-love anniversary. So teaching yourself self-love or love and what love really is, because a lot of us have super damaging ideologies of love. Some of us even think love has to do with pain. If we were grown up in some sort of circumstance where we were being hurt, in some way, shape or form, having some sort of trauma. So learning what love is, the real core root of love, which is this pure, kind energy that never aims to harm you, but always aims to help and give you everything you need. First you learn what love is, and then you create a regenerative energy of that in yourself. And the way you can do that is you can literally just say, I regenerate self-love as a mantra, or I am a regenerator of love. Seeing the love inside of you as a renewable resource that is infinite and abundant abundant and limitless is how you create that regenerative self-love. If you don't create regenerative self-love and you think that you have this limited level of love for yourself, you're gonna go seeking love in other people because love is this really weird phenomenon. All people crave love, heroes and villains both crave love. And so even if you're in a negative state, you can't help but need that and want that. So if you don't regenerate it for yourself, what you're doing is you're depending on other people to give you love. It's better to be the person who has infinite love, who hands out love to others, rather than the person who needs that love and goes searching for it. That is a place of desperation and that's not a place of leadership. That's operating from a place of scarcity and the universe is so abundant there's so much fruitful energy to go around. 
So right here, right now, you can use this video and say, I watched Ashley Lanise's video, I had an epiphany, and now I regenerate love and I soothe myself with that love. Tip number two is practice psychomagic in order to self-soothe instantly. Psychomagic is a term invented by Alejandro Jodorowsky and it basically is the psychological technique that says that things don't actually have to really be working quote unquote to have a soothing effect on your psyche. Here is a crystal. This is amethyst and a lot of people use crystals for self-soothing and the argument from the scholarly community is that crystals don't actually have healing properties and this is fuel for you to rebuttal them. Psychomagic is a psychological technique that is being more used and more widespread today. And it is the technique that this crystal doesn't actually have to have mystical magical properties in order for it to soothe you. It is woven into the placebo effect, which is I think amethyst brings me more spiritual energy, more calm energy. My mind has associated amethyst with the fact that I think it will bring me healing. So as I hold amethyst, as I point the crystal outward or place the crystal on my crystal grid, that will actually bring me that healing psychologically because our subconscious brain is so creative that it doesn't actually have to be logical. We can believe in something so much that it actually starts working. For instance, there's all these different kind of things you can do where you can write down your intentions and then destroy the sheet of paper or, you know, light a candle for positive energy. All of these things, technically it's like, oh, is that really happening? But then you can use the psychomagic as the support. This actually does change your psychological state and bring you that energy that you intended it to do. Tip number three is self-soothing instantly involves grounding yourself. This book is called The Body Keeps Score by Basel van der Kolk and I literally absolutely adore this book. If you want to embark on your shadow work journey, self-healing journey, self-soothing journey, I recommend this book. I love it so much. I read it on Audible and then I got it in paper format because I love this book so much and this is something you can use when you are freaking out and maybe you have something that is classic classified as a trauma. For instance, my car accident was classified as a trauma. So I bought this book to understand how to process that trauma. It was very hard for me to drive again and see car accidents on the road. It would transport me back to that memory of my car accident. And even just thinking about car accidents could pull me back into those traumatic memories and do very damaging things to me. And in those moments, I would feel that intense pain. And so grounding is so key. Grounding is as simple as thinking to yourself, where is my body connecting to the ground or to the floor? And noting that you are here in this reality and you are not back there in that traumatic event. It's so simple, but honestly, I feel like this is the most important point for self-healing that if you don't take anything away from these videos, remember to ground yourself because it is so easy to fall back into those traumatic memories. And if you read the book, The Body Keeps Score, they even kind of suggest that when you think about your trauma, trauma is stored in the emotional memory and we almost like teleport back to our trauma and you can sink so deeply in it and start to have that visceral flash bulb experience and it's like you travel back to it in your head and you're back there. So grounding yourself when you're talking about your trauma, like right now, I've been talking about my car accident, being consciously aware that my feet are placed on the hardwood floor. Having that awareness is how you ground yourself and remain here 
and not super deep into your imagination, sinking deep within that sand, as I like to kind of think about it, and stopping yourself from pulling yourself back into a super painful and highly charged emotional state. So when I would see car accidents as I was driving, I would be like, okay, my left foot is making contact with the floor of the car. My right foot is pushing on the gas. I am good. I am here in this reality. And just making a note of that really helped me and I feel can also help you in your instant self-soothing journey. Tip number four is to, when you feel anxiety in your chest, do a pounding exercise where you tap out that energy. What you essentially wanna do is you wanna just take your hands and pound out that sensation. And you can do all kinds of different things just start like massaging yourself. And in my acting classes that I took in college, we did a lot of these kind of exercises and I was like, man, we need to teach these to more people. Give yourself a little bit of like a neck massage back here. That always feels really good. And that has a bodily response that your muscles remember, ooh, this feels good, this is relaxing. And then it will alleviate that emotion and that anxiety that you might be carrying with you. Another thing to add here is that if you feel anxiety moving around, getting up and changing your physiological state really helps you shift from a hurtful state to a more healed state. If you look into quantum physics or quantum mechanics, I will link a playlist down below that's amazing. They talk about how if the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics is correct, the way that you shift out of a parallel reality is you change your physical state because you are at rest in a reality if you don't move. Technically, now your cells can be creating different parallel realities. So I know this is a super loaded topic. I encourage you guys to do a lot of research on quantum physics, but think of the people who are unhappy. What do they do? They usually repeat the same patterns over and over again, or they're the kind of people that stay at home all day and lay in bed. And listen, if you're one of those people or if you know those people, this isn't to shame those kinds of people. It's to get them to realize like, hey, get up, go do something, even if it feels uncomfortable because it'll feel uncomfortable because it's not your normal at first, but the more you do it, you will feel that alleviation, that self-soothing energy, and then you will be going through the process of having those self-healing habits. So whenever I feel like a massive swarm of anxiety, I get up and I stand up and I made a body language video recently, which I will link down below. I do power poses. I really expand my whole bubble so that I can get out of that state and put myself into a more healed state. Tip number six for how to self-soothe and self-heal is through art therapy. This is the point I am the most excited to tell you guys about. Here is a picture that I wanted to show you guys. It's kind of hard to see in the light, but this is just a drawing of myself that I did for art therapy. When the pandemic hit, I dove into art therapy because as some of you guys know, germs are something that I have struggled with in the past. And so I was having so much anxiety. This is actually when I learned a good portion of these self-soothing techniques. And so I would draw these pictures of my lungs, of my heart, and I would color them in yellow and then write these things on the side that were so super positive like, I have halo energy around my heart, around my lungs, and really give myself that creative outlet to soothe myself. And so I encourage you guys to look into art therapy and to use art therapy for self-soothing. I think it is one of the best ways to self-soothe because every time I did this, I always felt alleviated and relieved. Tip number seven is understand that no one is going to save you 
you have to save yourself. I don't think that's the way the world should be, but it is the way that the world is right now. There's so many things going on. There's COVID, human trafficking, human rights atrocities, and the world seems to be so busy with all of those things that it doesn't have time to focus on each individual and what they need to heal. So it is up to you to heal yourself. Even though you deserve whatever mechanism of healing that you believe that you do, sadly, the world doesn't work that way. And the thing is, is if you can heal yourself and do the thing that you shouldn't have to do, then you can help heal so many other people. Before my car accident, I was super audacious and like, oh, you know, like I've got all these mental health issues, but the world should have all these things lined up that makes it easy for me to just follow through and get the help that I deserve, but it didn't. And I had to realize <laughs> I was being super demanding of a world that wasn't real. The world will change when you change your inner world, when you give yourself that healing that you deserve. So that quote that you have to save yourself shouldn't be something that makes you sad in fact, if you've been following these self-healing videos, it should be kind of inspiring because like I talked about in last week's video, you know what you need. You know what you want this person to come to you to do and rescue and sweep you off your feet. Like, you know, and you will disappoint yourself less because you actually know what it is. So put your value in your worth in yourself and realize you have those tools to heal yourself. And then when you do, you can create whatever reality. Like I have these big goals to help other people heal. And through my journey, just by sharing my story, I have helped so many people more than I ever would have imagined. This might sound kind of morbid, but sometimes I think about like, what if I wouldn't have lived in that car accident? I used that car accident to springboard myself to heal myself because I finally realized no one's gonna help me. I gotta do all this on my own. I have to be willing to at the same time. And so I was ready, I was willing. I decided to grow my platform on social media to help others. And through that journey, so many people reached out to me and thanked me for it. And so when you heal yourself, you pave the way to heal so many others. And I cannot explain to you how rewarding that is. So as you take these self-healing, self-soothing tips where you ground yourself and where you, you know, write yourself a note like I talked about in the last video or where you do art therapy. You do these little things, they add up to build your belief in yourself and people feel that. So that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to subscribe if you like this content. Give this video a like. If you found any of these tips helpful, go forth, self-soothe, and I will see you in the next video.